So, let us examine the other areas of sustainable happiness models and uh, what are the factors associated with those things. So, intentional activity is also uh, another area that also looked into while talking about the sustainable model of happiness. Actions or exercises that a person chooses to engage in that will decide also that will bring one's happiness say for examples like can, can be cognitive experience for examples counting one's blessings. You know uh, in fact, um, uh, at the lighter side of it and there is a joke in fact, related to the one's blessings and uh, um, what we otherwise called uh, that falls in the non-blessing sides what we call is sin you know S I N. So, th there is a person you know who was suddenly taken away by Yamaraj, Yamaraj the, the God who gives punishment of death you know. Then the person argued with Yamaraj why are you taking me my life is even not um, uh, half finished uh, uh, would I call it as a you know premature death. No, then Jamrat said that you know your time was for 50 years, but looking at the sins you have committed in your life, your age has been reduced. So, if you compare your sin, uh, sinful activities and the blissful activities, your sinful are more than your blissful. Then, then the person tried to argue with the, uh, the uh, Yamraj, so, sir, how do you know that uh, my sinful activities are more than blissful activities. No, we document, we keep record of there is another God who takes care of uh, all these things. Then he gone uh, to the person who keeps record of it. Uh, then the, 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 the register of these activities said yes, you know this time you, you said that you, you given a chance you will destroy these areas or you will kill this person, that person. Then the person started suddenly comparing, sir then, then why you have not recorded when I felt many positive things. I thought of creating a temple in these areas, I thought of creating building a school in these areas. So, will not be counted as my contribution and blissful activities. Then suddenly they realized and when they started counting all these blessings or blissful activities, then this person's uh, blissful activities was more than compared to his sinful. <laughs> then his quantum of punishments were reduced and he was given few years more for his life. So, even it counts in terms of life and death. So, although it seems to be a joke, but there are scientific reasons behind it. People who contribute positively more towards their life, they feel satisfied, they feel happy and that you know even studies have seen that uh, positive contribution enhances longevity of human beings. So, that is uh, that is in form of counting one's blessings maybe in terms of some random act of kindness when you are showing uh, an act of kindness behavior towards others oh this is a poor man let us help him out. So, suppose you saw an accident people are um, very badly injured uh, you thought to help help out them and to send him the hospitals etcetera etcetera. So, this kind of behavior you know once uh, it alters one's perspective about oneself. So, you are showing a sense of highness about your behavior. So, uh, that brings some sort of satisfaction in one's life and the world in general. So, therefore, intentional activity has a direct bearing on sustainable happiness. So, if you keep on counting all your positive contribution maybe and that will create a best for your sustainable happiness. Then another factor is what we call the circumstances, factors constituting the background of one's life. You know, if the person is uh, living in a climate of distrust, mistrust, you know, uh, revengefulness, um, attack and terror, etcetera, etcetera, that is likely to affect more. But a person um, uh, living in an environment or in a family or in our organizations uh, that is full of peace, tranquility, love, affections, etcetera, uh, is likely to be more comfortable, more happy, more helpful, and uh, would like to cherish the workplace for lifetime. So, there are, and say for examples, a person living in a place where there is peop people are sensitive towards gender equity gender sensitivity, 
ethnicity, there is no racial violence at all. So, this kind of place are likely to affect, suppose like what is going on in the United States after the elections, there is a huge fight going on between black and whites. Blacks are being selectively targeted by whites. So, there is a you know uh, a huge outcry, rage is developing among the minds of people. So, this kind of atmosphere is likely to impair human health and happiness. Then personal experiences, how traumatic experience you have in your life that is also going to impact the sustainable happiness of one's. Say for example, traumas and triumphs, if you are elected with you are triumph with your success stories that will be likely to enhance your sustainability. But if you are successively or continuously attacked by one after another traumatic events, say for example, in school days you were not uh, uh, loved by friends, after marriage you were not by family members or your children. Then, uh, after entering into your uh, job scenario, then you, you did not you were not considered as a good employee of the organization. So, this kind of repeated you know traumatic experience may uh, suppress one's feeling of happiness or then, then the person starts realizing I am the um, dis most disgraceful, disgraceful person in this earth. So, that is why personal experience sometimes labels one one sustainable happiness. Then life status and variables. For examples, you know marital status, education, label, health status all are the determinants of one sustainable happiness moment. Yes, physical attractiveness, you know suppose you know that you look beautiful towards others and people appreciate uh, you are looking very good, very graceful. So, you feel a sense of satisfaction, inner satisfaction is there and that enhances one's sustainability in terms of general living also. There are, uh, so the findings here uh, supports that you know set point contributes 50 percent at what level you fix your set point of happiness. Then intentional activity also contributes close to 40 percent and in fact, yes circumstances also 10 percent. So, this may vary from culture to culture depending upon. So, does that mean that does happiness is equivalent to well being? So, let us see well being is equivalent to the quality of life people experience in their lives. So, some people also given as formula that happiness is the no, sorry well being is the combination of well being is the combination of happiness plus meaning. So, happy life and meaningful life. So, both contributes towards one's well being. So, let us examine what is those areas are. Uh, so, here there is a you know, different approaches to happiness like achievement of life goals, how a person becomes happy. So, these are some precursors of well being, you know, life goals. So, if things are happening as per your plan of actions, then you are likely to lead a very balanced life, but if these goals are not achieved often obstructed by hindrances or different factors that is likely to affect your sense of satisfaction, happiness etcetera. But when you look at the subjective uh, uh, perspectives on happiness, there are different forms of well being, subjective well being considered by Diner. Diner talk about you know the hedonic which is most a feeling component you know life satisfaction such as positive and a negative affective you can uh, uh, assess one's uh, state of subjective well being. But if you look at uh, the eudynamic approach uh, that is given by uh, Raif, uh, this is often self realizations you know I, I may not be uh, having sophisticated facilities for my living. But uh, still, I can say that I am a better of persons than many others. So that self-realization. So that's why Rife says that happiness is not mere a feeling factor; it is a multi-component perspective, right? So this constitutes. The, therefore, the whole 
मेंटल हेल्थ फ्रेमवर्क द होल मेंटल हेल्थ फ्रेमवर्क इज कॉन्सियस ऑफ थ्री इंपोर्टेंट डोमेन इमोशनल सोशल एंड साइकोलॉजिकल आई वॉज जस्ट यू नो कोटिंग इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ सोशल नेटवर्किंग कॉन्टेक्सट इमोशनल सोशल एंड साइकोलॉजिकल In addition to that, I used to add one more dimension to it, that is what we call the spiritual dimension. Why spiritual? Because it is necessary to reach at the transcendence level. What we call, although it is very you know very subjective in nature, but in Indian tradition, you know people often talk about the concept of moksha. Which is the highest level of well-being you can one can imagine, and that is not possible by adding a spiritual dimension of well-being. How you connect yourself with what we call the super self? So this is this is what we call the highest self. So emotional well-being is the presence of how much positive affectivity you are enjoying or satisfaction factors in counter compared to the absence of NA. But social well-being, incorporating acceptance, how you are accepted in the society, among your friends groups, um, in your workplace, in your family, actualization, what is your contribution, what is the coherence and contribution towards others. So these labels, your social well-being, your social image, particularly your social image in the society, in the community, in the organizations. But when you look about the psychological well-being, it is not mere. Emotional well-being or social well-being. It is your self-acceptance. Do really. It is a self-realization. Do really accept yourself that you are a good person. You have a good self-image in the presence of others. You have been accepted by others. Your personal growth. How do you see? Where do you see yourself in the strata of the society or in your organization where people place you? So, your personal growth. Your purpose in life. Have you realized the purpose of your life? Purpose in life. Then, environmental mastery. This is very important. The 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 environment you are living in. Is it conducive for your living? The autonomy. Are you enjoying the autonomy to express yourself, the positive relationship with others? So these are these are important markers or indicators indications of one's well-being. But uh, you know, look at the. Uh, the these are certain factors. Psychological well-being. I have talked about proposed uh, by arrived in 1989. Six important component of. Psychological well-being. He talks about he talks about uh, uh, autonomy, environmental mastery, personal growth, positive relationship with others, purpose in life, self self acceptance. So uh, th this slide shows that the core dimensions of psychological well-being and their theoretical foundation. This is one of the most comprehensive models. That uh, there are many other. With related to the six components of RIPE models, like you know, fully functional person. Roger says that uh, psychological well-being can be considered as a fully functioning person. This is a question there in the quiz test. Yesterday I was looking into. So, who proposed the fully functioning model of uh, human personalities? So. Uh, this is Carl Rogers who talks about the harmonious growth or harmonious functioning of one's fun functionality. What do you mean by fully functioning? When you talk about fully functioning, we refer to both social, spiritual, emotional, and cognitive domain of one's functioning. Then Alport talks about that one's well-being is determined by his maturity. So well-being is nothing but one's emotional maturity. You know, psychological maturity, emotional or psychological maturity. 
So, what is what, what is this emotional or psychological maturity? So, it is expected that the person should function the way the society expects from him or her. So, like conforming to the rules and regulations, acting as per the expectations of the surroundings. So, there are many other areas like executive process of personal. Some people say, you know, Newgarten talks about, then uh, Buller talks about basic life tendencies. These are essential basic life tendencies that are, you know, essential for achieving one's well-being. Then personal, er Erickson talks about, you know, Erickson's eight stages of social development. He talks about one's personal development is an indication of one's well-being. So, then Frank also talk about will to meaning. So, Frankl, yes, yes, Frankl. Frankl talks about it is the will of a person to have meaning about life, how far you cherish meaning in your life, that is an indication of one's well being. Then, mental health by Jahoda, he talks about mental health is equivalent to one's well being. Jung has a different view, he talks, he labels or equalizes well being with individuations. And you know, Maslow talks about self actualization is one's highest level of well being. So, many people have many explanations, but however, the central theme of well being remains about the four important domains social, emotional, spiritual, and psychological. Well, this diagram talks about you know the dynamic model of well being. If you look about it, the well being depends upon you know once the function functioning well and uh, satisfaction of needs. One is the enabling factors or the condition that is opportunity, obstacles, inequalities and social norms and culture. These are very important you know uh, uh, influential factors in the functioning of how a person will well functions. So, these obstacles also uh, also decides that uh, whether they will disturb or restore one's peace and well being. So, it goes on the one's life experiences like sa happiness, satisfaction, interest, boredom and distress. If one's experience about life is dominated by boredom and distress, the well being will go down. If it is more of happiness, satisfaction and interest and zeal, then it will enhance the well being factors. Another important area is called psychological resourcefulness. How psychologically you are resourceful is also an indication of one's well being. Say for examples like resilient, optimism, self esteem. So, people those who experience a high level of well being in their life are likely to be resilient, uh, possess a high level of self esteem and they are likely to be optimistic in their life. And there is also some, some certain other characteristics that are also reflections of one's uh, uh, well being like you know to be autonomous, competent and connected to others. So, so the, the, these are the scientific you know uh, character of uh, a person who likely to possess a high level of well being, a person likely to be reasonable. So, these, these are the cognitive markers of one's well being that means, his cognitive functioning is, uh, is intact. Well, uh, the, these are some of the definitions of the theory guided dimensions of well being. Say, for examples, like we talked about self acceptance, how self acceptance is described in the context of well being. Like, it is a process, a positive attitude towards the self, it acknowledges and accepts multiple aspects of self, including good and bad qualities, it feels positive about the past. So, oh, oh, a person who scores high on these sides is likely to possess better well being than scoring low on these sides on self acceptance like you know feels dissatisfied with self, disappointed, feeling disgusting, troublesome life, wishes to be different than what we see in others. So, this kind of features I often observe in people those who are disinterested in the class. Why some people do not come to the class? This is one of the important reason and the second thing is that you know positive relationship with others. 
this is also another I used to relate all these characteristics with in the people who are irregular in the class you know high score uh, uh, high score means has uh, a very warmth uh, personality satisfying trusting relationship with others is concerned about welfare of others capable of strong empathy affection intimacy understands give and take up human relations these people are also very sincere in class and they they used to do proxy for their other absentees <laughs> in classes so i often used to tell them okay another thing is the personal growth and it is also seen that you know those who are low scorer in the class they are personal growth also in general is very low this thing that if they concentrate on other activities there will be overall growth of their personality no not not exactly that you need to have a all round development of your personality so people scoring high on personal growth has a high indication of well being like has a feeling of continued development sees self as uh, growing and expanding they can realize that they are very open to experience has a sense of realizing his or her potential sees improvement in life but on the other side people those who are low on their personal growth they are likely to have you know low level of uh, personal high level of personal stagnation lack of sense of improvement then you know expansion of overtime feels bored and uninterested with life feels unable to develop new attitude and behavior so this is one of the you know expansion of time I have seen a group of students. Whenever I give any assignments, surprising, they will have, sir, I failed the deadline. Can I submit it by evening? The moment I say, yeah, yeah, you can. Then say, sir, I think in the evening I have a lab. So can I come tomorrow? So they, they just you know uh, ask for demanding more and more times, expanding their times, and they never get the deadline. Purpose in life is very important. if you are so focused about the achievement of the goals life goals you are likely to maintain a very healthy well being has a goal in life and a sense of directedness you are focused you know feels there is meaning a, a meaning to the present and past then holds belief that life purpose has aims and objective in living so th this you know keeps them going so th that is very important in one's uh, restoring one's well being in life yes environmental mastery is very important because uh, a person who score high on is, is a sign of his sense of mastery and the competence is in managing the environment controls complex array of external activities makes effective use of surrounding and opportunities and able to choose or create you know context suitable to personal needs and values so this is exactly why people display a very you know harmonious uh, Uh, functioning of their uh, personalities so it, it one can create a simple you know simple exercise uh, if you if you, as, as a as a teacher if you want to measure somebody's well being just uh, just make a small exercise like erase each dimensions from you know say for example self acceptance you know ask them to rate from 1 to 10 you know very nature of it to not at all then similarly you can see then the next one is what we call positive relationship with others positive relations with others again very well to not at all so ask the person please place yourself where do you stand on the 10 point scale what is the level of your relationship with others so maybe that will give an indication where exactly the person stands so then you can also put the another like on the personal growth dimension personal growth dimension where do you place yourself from 1 to 
So, even this small exercise can be conducted in you know school or classroom situations. You ask uh, the students to realize, uh, place them where do they exactly fit into. It may not give them the exact status of their well being, but probably that will be giving an indications. Say for example, purpose in their life. and environmental mastery. So, this is what we call an objective assessment. Can the same be also, you know, rate each item, rate each dimension. on a 10 point scale. You know. This the same thing can be also measured by storytelling, you know just we discuss even you know by story writing also writing a paragraph, writing a paragraph. You just ask them write one paragraph, maybe in ten lines, five to ten lines on each dimensions. Like you know, first one is called self acceptance. Self acceptance. Just describe the meaning of the each dimensions. Ask them. Then ask them to write a paragraph on positive relation. Do you really enjoy positive relationship with an others? Write to one paragraph or say for in 50 words or 25 words something like that. Then the, the next one is personal growth. How do you realize that you are experiencing your personal growth? Please reflect them and uh, like 10 lines. Similarly, pur uh, pur purpose in life. Do you have a purpose in your life? What is there? Where it is? How do you realize it? Please explain and reflect on your thoughts. Then next is environmental mastery. Do you think that everything works at your wish. So, the things are moving on your wish that means, you, uh, you uh, things are under your control is the environment responding as per your goals and the targets. If not then that is that means, you are disturbed. So, if yes the things are happening. So, the, 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 these are small exercise, but powerful technique for evaluation of one's well being, but however, see it, this depends upon uh, the mastery of the person on the concept. So, uh, so, otherwise it will not give a clear picture or understanding of one's whole being. So, moving forward there are also people say that five ways to restore one's well being or develop one's well being. Uh, this is also a, a framework what you call well being can be achieved by good functioning like you know very simple form of achieving uh, one's uh, satisfaction and happiness in life like you know yes. So, what is this well being? No, be, be active, be connected and uh, give feedback, take notice and keep learning. We will discuss details how these five dimensions uh, that talks about uh, uh, the good functioning of well being. We will come back after a short break.